Hey everyone, Elliot here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo 2DS that I picked up in the £75 job lot of consoles. This thing doesn't do a lot. When you hold the power button, the light comes on, it pops, it turns off. It's a common fault, we've seen it before. I'm actually going to be doing this video a little bit differently. I've had quite a lot of messages about people's 2DSs being broken. So this video, I'm not going to be having any music, I'm not going to be speeding through things. It's going to be a very in-depth video. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet, uh, but it's going to be a bit more in-depth than some of the other ones I do because hopefully you'll actually be able to find this useful and fix your Nintendo 2DS. Speaking of which, this video has been sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a fantastic online learning community where you can explore a plethora of different classes to help learn new skills. The first 500 subscribers to click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Members get unlimited access to thousands of informative classes with super in-depth tutorials such as this one about learning to solder. After that, a membership is less than $10 a month. It's definitely a website worth checking out. There is so many different classes on there, photography, different art classes, videography, and also learning how to do technical things such as soldering. As you saw before, this thing isn't doing a lot. Now, one of the things that can happen if you smash the screen is the DS will just turn on, pop, and then turn off. And I don't actually know the technical reason as to why that is. But picking up a new screen, fortunately, isn't very expensive at all. You can get them from China for about £16 or from the UK for about £20. I'll leave a link to the UK one in the description below. Uh, but it's literally just a replacement screen for the 2DS, which is actually one big unit. There isn't two separate screens. It's just one big screen that we're going to slot in there. So what we're going to do is take this one apart. Um, I'm not going to be doing the whole cleaning process on this in this video, but it's incredibly dirty. There's lots of dirt in the crevices of this thing where someone's sweaty hand was. Um, there's a bit of dirt inside the buttons as well, which is never too nice. The joystick actually feels really good, so that's uh, always a positive. The D-pad looks all right as well. Um, but besides that, this actually isn't in bad condition at all. It's fairly decent, but we don't actually know if there's any other problems with it. The cartridge slot might not work, the buttons might not work, uh, the touchscreen might be unresponsive. We've got quite a lot of things to go through to check if it's actually okay, but we can't do any of it right now whilst the screen is damaged. So let's start by taking this thing apart and we can put the new screen inside. Now, one of the best things you can do for this, if you're not doing what I'm doing, which is cleaning everything up, is actually just to leave the screws in the shell. The screws inside of these Nintendo consoles typically all differ in size and shape, so you don't want to get them all mixed up. And if you're pretty new to doing this sort of stuff, um, it's a big risk to get everything all mixed up. So you can see I've kept the screws in there. It's not going to be very helpful for me because I'm going to need to put this thing in the sink and give it a huge clean. But for some people, you're not going to need to do that. And it's a good way to keep the screws in the right place. Remove the battery and that should actually be all of the screws on the device. Now, don't just yank this piece up because there is actually a ribbon cable attaching to the cameras. So we can access that by just flipping this over slightly and you'll be able to see the ribbon cable right there. Get under there with your fingernail and the ribbon cable will just pull out. Now, because I'm going to be chucking this in the sink, I am going to be removing the camera because we obviously don't want that to get in the water. But it's really nice to know that the camera is a fairly easy thing to replace. You just have to pop off the back and then the whole camera unit will be something that's completely replaceable on eBay. Taking that back piece off exposes some of the dirt that's inside this, uh, this device. Pretty nasty. We're definitely going to need to put this in some antibacterial hand soap water or something. So we didn't actually realize, but there's actually an SD card in here, but look how awfully slow that comes out. That actually really worries me that this thing has some sort of water damage or something, but might just be that it's a tight fit in there. But what we're gonna to need to do now is just remove all of these screws that we see on the motherboard. Um, as you saw, these two pieces come off fairly easily. Be careful with the um, volume slider there. Just set them all to the side. And we're gonna to need to just unscrew all of the Phillips screws that we see on the board. Now 
One good thing to note as well is the water indicator up here is not tripped. So that is a little bit reassuring for me. What we need to do now is go over all of the ribbon cables and unlatch them. So I'm gonna zoom the camera in for this. To do this, I recommend a little pry tool or something. There's quite a lot of them and you really don't wanna be damaging these. I also recently picked up these ceramic end tweezers, which are really good for removing ribbon cables exactly like this one. You're just a little bit more uh, safe than using a metal one, which might actually puncture the ribbon cable. So you can just grab it and wiggle it out. And there's our two first ribbon cables unhooked from the motherboard. So replacing the joystick is obviously fairly easy as well. It's quite literally just undoing those two screws uh, and then you have to pull it out, which actually I'll probably just do with this pry tool and then it will come out like that and the tip remains in there and you can get that out fairly easily as well if yours is quite dirty. Um, and then literally just buy replacement ones of these on eBay and push it back in. There's actually two more screws just holding this plastic bezel piece down. We're gonna need to just remove that before we can take the motherboard out. There we go, that lifts out fairly easily. And then the whole motherboard should just lift off like that. Very straightforward. Doesn't look like there's any damage on that anywhere. Very good condition actually, which is really nice. We'll give the uh, button contacts a wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol. So here's our big screen, but before we take that out, I'm gonna just remove all of the buttons because we're gonna be putting all of that in the sink. Just be careful in these corners, there's uh, sort of little metal rods for the lanyard holes. Just remove those uh, because you might lose them. All right, and that is everything removed from the 2DS. Just have the screen left in there and the joystick, so I'll give that a clean as well. Uh, to get this out, I think I'm just gonna gently flex the, uh, the shell piece, get my finger underneath, twist the other way slightly, and it will just lift up like that, and then peel it off. Fairly simple. And actually, now that I've got that off, I can see the crack. Not sure you're gonna be able to pick that up, but I can see the crack going along the screen and I can actually see two more on the bottom screen. So uh, yeah, definitely a good sign that it is just the screen that was broken. We do actually need this little black sticker adhesive piece uh, to take that off as well. So the only thing I can't take out is the home button because to get that out, you just have to unadhere this um, sticker piece. But I think I'm just gonna dunk it in downwards like that and scrub everything around that with a toothbrush. Um, and then we can go ahead and just put the whole thing back together and see if it works. I know I initially said that I wasn't going to speed through anything and put music on it, but I don't really feel as if this is the most important part of the video, hence why I'm speeding through it and putting music on it. The reassembly process is incredibly straightforward and is literally the disassembly process in reverse. There's nothing that you need to know how something goes in in a specific way. It's all very, very straightforward. In fact, I would go as far as to say, if you're looking to get into repairs, Picking up a faulty 2DS is incredibly cheap, and as I said, the replacement screens are also very cheap. It's a very easy thing to take apart, a great way to get into doing a repair. Once I put everything in, I screwed the motherboard in, and it was time to put the battery in the back and give it a test. Good stuff. I then gave everything a clean and wrapped it up. So, here it is. If I'm not mistaken, we've now fixed two of the 75 pound job lot things. We've got a PlayStation Vita Slim, the PSV 2000, and also a Nintendo 2DS, a Pokemon edition. So I'm very happy with how this has all turned out. I popped my favorite game of all time in the back 
uh, which you'll see in just a moment. And um, I've given it a little test and everything seems to work absolutely perfectly. Uh, everything is responsive, the touchscreen is very accurate, uh, all the buttons work with no problems at all. Oh. There we go, you can uh, go inside, the home button works absolutely fine, the speaker works absolutely perfectly, all the volume's fine, the sleep button, let's give that a try, hang on, we'll wait for it to turn on. That works absolutely fine as well. I have no reason to believe this isn't going to be a perfectly functioning uh, DS. I'm, in fact, really happy to have one of these because I've got really big hands and this, in my opinion, is the nicest way to play DS games. So I paid £75 for the whole job lot and you would not be able to pick up these on eBay together for £75. So, so far, pretty good bargain of a job lot, although we pretty much already knew that anyway. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. As I said at the start, they're giving away two months of premium membership to the first 500 people to use the link below. So get on it, check it out. It's a great way to learn new skills and improve your existing ones. I have genuinely been watching the tips on how to solder and it's a great in-depth video with a whole write up in the description. I do appreciate Skillshare sponsoring this video and hopefully you understand why I have to do sponsored videos from time to time. So. Big thanks to them, big thanks to you for watching. If you're new to the channel and you like the video, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.